Hi everyone, this is TJ from Avid and welcome back to MBOX Studio. In this video, we're gonna utilize some of our favorite concepts for this unit. We're gonna take advantage of everything we've talked about up until this point and we're gonna use it to make a complete song, track by track. Let's go ahead and jump in and get started. It's gonna be fun, it's gonna be funky, and we're gonna have a good time. Let's go. We're gonna kick things off with drums. And we're gonna utilize a drum loop that I found in BPM Create, which is included in the MBOX Ignition Pack. BPM Create is really easy to navigate and it's got so many great samples and loops to choose from. I have one saved right here in my downloads that I really enjoyed the sound of. This is a super cool drum loop. And all you have to do to download this is click this button right here and you're off to the races. So let's go back over to Pro Tools and create our drum loop. I've already downloaded my track, so I'm gonna open my workspace browser. I'm gonna go into sound libraries and I'm gonna get into my downloads. Here's my drum loop. And as you can see, this icon with the metronome that's highlighted green means that when I drag my drum loop into Pro Tools, it's gonna conform to my session tempo. So I don't have to do that manually, which is awesome. I click and drag into my tracks list. And now my drum loop is in Pro Tools, ready to go. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rename this. Drum loop sounds like an appropriate name for this. I'm gonna cut off the end of this track because I'm only gonna use the first half. And I'm also gonna take the clip gain down a little bit. This is coming in pretty hot. Perfect. Let's hear what this sounds like. Awesome. Now that we have our drums, we don't need our metronome anymore, so I'm gonna turn that off. This drum loop is really pretty cool on its own, but I'm gonna utilize a great feature within MBOX Studio to spice it up a little bit more. Using the effect send on the back of the unit, we're gonna send this drum loop into a guitar overdrive pedal and mix in some huge overdriven drums on top of our clean signal. Since we're sending this signal to a guitar pedal, we wanna change a quick preference in MBOX control. Remember, we can open MBOX control at any time by pressing this M button on the top of the unit. Click on the gear icon to get into your preferences and make sure that high Z out one is selected under effects loops because that's what our guitar pedal wants to receive. Press okay and we're ready to move on. To avoid any feedback, let's click on effects send one and make sure that all of our faders are pulled down to avoid any feedback before we plug into this overdrive pedal. Next, we wanna run an instrument cable out of effects send one into our guitar pedal and back into effects return seven on our MBOX. In Pro Tools, we wanna to create a send to an available MBOX channel. In this case, I'm gonna send this out to channel three Let's turn the fader up on our send to make sure that signal gets into the M box and let's play it. Awesome. Let's head back over to M box control and route this back into our effects return. In effects send one, we wanna slowly turn up the internal software input three while our track is playing so that it feeds into our effects return. Let's do that now. Awesome. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another track in Pro Tools with effects return seven as our input and make sure that we input monitor that track. I have a track preset saved that makes this really easy. I'm gonna pull it up here in my track presets. This one is called Drum Effects. As you can see, the input for this track is effects return seven, so it's gonna receive that overdriven drum signal. Let's record enable this track. Also, we're gonna input monitor this track. Now I'm gonna play my drums and adjust my overdrive pedal to taste and mix those two drum sounds together. Ooh, 
Ooh, that sounds awesome. I love, love how those two are sitting together. Let me close out of this send, and I'm gonna record that right there. Press three on my numeric keypad to record, and let's put these two together. Awesome. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this send inactive because I'm not using it anymore. And now I have two independent drum tracks, my regular drum loop and my affected drum loop, which if I solo and play back, sounds like this. Now those two sound really good together on my main monitors, but I wanna make sure that that's gonna translate to smaller sets of speakers. This is where I'm gonna use another feature on the Mbox Studio. I'm gonna use my alt monitors, which are hooked up right here in front of me. All I have to do is press the encoder switch to get over to my alt monitors. My main monitors are muted and I can listen through these smaller sets of speakers to make sure that everything is translating well. Awesome, that's sounding great, I'm ready to move on. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to record our first guitar part. Let me duplicate these drums a couple times so that my guitar loop will match my drum loop. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in, but I'm looking for a super funky kind of DI guitar sound, just like Prince used to do, straight into the console. First, we're gonna plug in and set our input gain. I'm gonna come into my main hardware output and I'm gonna turn the fader up on channel one so that I can hear my guitar coming back to me. Now I'm gonna adjust my input gain right here with this encoder on the left hand side. Awesome. Now, if you followed along in earlier videos, you might remember that we talked about all of the benefits of Mbox Studio for the guitarist in particular, and I'm gonna utilize some of those functions right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the variable Z function and change my input impedance to high Z. This gives me the feel of plugging into a vintage console. I love how this feels under my fingers, and it gives me that funky sound that I'm looking for. I'm also gonna take this DI signal to the next level by utilizing the built-in EQ in Mbox Control. If I press this button right here to unbypass, you can see that I've built this EQ that cuts out some of the lows and adds some sparkle to this guitar signal. And I've also highlighted EQ to DAW, which is going to send my EQ'd guitar signal into Pro Tools to be recorded, so I record exactly what I'm hearing. Great. Now let's tune up on the Mbox using the built-in tuner that can be accessed by this button right here on the front panel. I have my guitar signal ready to go. Let's head back to Pro Tools. Now back here in Pro Tools, I'm gonna enable low latency monitoring from the options menu. I wanna monitor my guitar sound directly out of Mbox. I don't want any latency, and this is so, so helpful when I'm playing this tight, funky music and trying to stay right here in the pocket. Next, I'm gonna create a new audio track, and once again, I have a track preset saved and ready to go. This one is Guitar Left. Now that my track is created, let's record enable it and play some funky guitar. Perfect. Okay, I love how that sounds, but we're gonna add another funky guitar. First, let me clip this so it's the same length as our drum loop. Another great feature on this interface is its expression pedal input jack. Expression pedals can be used to control pretty much any parameter that you can think of, but since I'm a guitarist and this is a funk track, 
The obvious use here is a wah pedal. First, I'll go ahead and plug my expression pedal into the expression switch 2 jack on the back of the unit using a basic TRS cable. Next, we're going to come over here to Mbox Control. I'm going to click up here on Expression 2 and make sure that Expression Pedal Mode MIDI Mode is selected. And yet again, I'm going to utilize variable Z and change my input impedance to 70K. This is the impedance that a wah pedal really wants to receive, and it's going to sound super natural. Now let's go back over to Pro Tools and create our second guitar track. First, I'm going to load up a track preset that already has a wah plugin ready to go. That's going to be this one right here, Guitar Right. As you can see, the black shiny wah plugin has been added on Insert A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record enable this guitar. I'm going to record enable this MIDI track, which is sending my data from my expression pedal. And if I right click on the plugin and make sure that CC11 is selected, CC11 is expression, I can move my expression pedal and control the sweep of the wah. Now, since we're monitoring out of Pro Tools for this and not Mbox Studio, I'm going to come up here and turn off low latency monitoring. I'm going to come back over to Mbox Control and mute my first track. Now that everything is hooked up and ready to go, let's lay down some funky wah guitar. <laughs> Perfect. Press spacebar to stop recording, and let's remove the end of this clip so we have another perfect loop. Now it's time to add some bass, and here I'm going to utilize one of the amazing Brainworks amp simulations that's included with Mbox. I'm going to control a virtual bass and expand using a MIDI controller. First, I turn off record enable on these tracks. Once again, Check out my handy track presets. And I have one right here called Bass. I press Create. And my bass track is now created for me. Here's the sound that I'm controlling via MIDI in Expand. This is a soft finger bass patch. But like I said, I'm utilizing the amazing Ampeg SVT VR plugin that's included with Mbox to make this sound a lot more realistic and give it that real girth and a little bit of drive. I love this plugin. It sounds so natural on bass, and the interface is clean and inspiring. Let's close out of this. I record enable my bass track, and I'm ready to go. Here we go from the top. Awesome. Now that our bass is done, the next thing I'm going to add is a searing lead guitar part. Here we go. As you guessed, I'm back into my track presets. This one is called Lead Guitar. I press Create, and I have my lead guitar track ready to go. Now here we have the incredible BX Mega Dual plugin that we mentioned earlier in this series. I love how this amp sounds on overdriven lead guitar parts. And yes, this is included in the Mbox Ignition Pack. So with that plugin loaded on this track, let's turn off Record Enable on our bass and turn on Record Enable on our lead guitar. Now once again, I'm going to come over to Mbox Control, and I'm going to change my input impedance in this case from 70K to 1 mega ohm. Let me stress again how awesome Variable Z is, because I can change my input impedance for pretty much every guitar track I have. I always have the perfect feel, whether I'm going into a wah pedal, an overdrive pedal, or the front of a tube amp simulation. We're back in Pro Tools. Let me pick up my guitar and record a lead guitar part.
press spacebar to stop recording, and we have our solo guitar part. Now this lead guitar part sounds pretty cool on its own, but I'm going to actually try reamping it through this little orange amplifier I have to my right. I think that's going to give me a more appropriate sound for this kind of quirky, funky song that we have going here. If you remember in one of our earlier videos, we discussed reamping workflows with Mbox Studio. It's really intuitive and really easy. First, we're going to connect a TS cable to our amp coming out of the high Z out to amp jack on the front of the unit. Next, we want to select the track that we want to reamp and change the output to an available send in Mbox. In this case, we're coming out of output 8. I also want to make sure to bypass this plugin so we have just the clean DI guitar signal being fed through the amp. Now let's go over to Mbox Control. Let's come over to this out to amp channel and let's turn up output 8. We come back to Pro Tools. Now I'm going to be hearing playback through my main monitors out of Pro Tools like normal, but my lead guitar part is going to be routed to my amplifier. Now that everything is routed correctly, I'm going to play this track in a loop and adjust my amp settings in real time to get the exact tone that I want. Okay, perfect. That is sounding good, so it's time to mic up this guitar cabinet and re-record that into Pro Tools. Next, we want to mic up our amplifier and connect the XLR input to an available input on our interface. In this case, we're coming into Input 2. We're going to go ahead and create a new track in Pro Tools to receive that input. Once again, I have a track preset ready to go. This one is Guitar Reamp. You can see that my guitar reamp track has line two coming straight into it from our Mbox. So now what I'm going to do is play back a few more times and set the input gain to get it just right. Okay, I'm happy with that input gain, and the last thing I'm going to do before we record is I'm going to turn back on low latency monitoring. So I'm going to be monitoring my track out of my headphones, and just my guitar is going to be coming out of my amp feeding back to Mbox Studio. This will eliminate any risk of feedback. So let me put on my headphones, and here we go. Just like that, we've reamplified our lead guitar part, and I love how it sounds coming out of the orange amp. We don't need this old lead guitar track anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and hide it and make it inactive, and I'm going to turn off record enable on our reamp track. Next thing I want to do is I want to add a little ambience, a little room to this guitar reamp track. So let me select it and come in here to the inserts. Another plugin that comes with the Mbox Ignition Pack is the Baby Audio Vibe Box. I love what this plugin does to really raw sounding tracks that have no ambience because it adds some really indescribable magic. It's like a delay and reverb and modulation all rolled up into one. So now I'm going to play back our track and turn this magic dial to kind of add some ambience to our guitar in real time. Ooh, that's kind of a smooth room ambience that I really like the sound of. I like that right there, so I'm going to keep it where I have it. If you've ever mixed a song before, you know the value of listening back to your mix on various speakers and headphones to make sure that everything is sitting correctly. The Bluetooth feature on Mbox makes this process super easy, 
and you can check your mixes on any speakers that have Bluetooth functionality, even your car if it's close enough. I'm gonna check my mix on my AirPods, which is something that I always like to do. First, let me put them in pairing mode. And then I'm gonna hold down the Bluetooth out button on the Mbox for two seconds. The Bluetooth button will flash blue, indicating that it's ready to pair. Once my devices are paired, the Bluetooth icon will turn solid blue, and I can toggle over to my Bluetooth out level and adjust it independently of my main monitor levels. Hopefully this gives you just a small glimpse into the creative possibilities with Mbox Studio. Thank you for joining us throughout this entire series. We cannot wait to hear what you create using this device. Thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you on the next one.